Welcome to the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast. Robert Glasscock, Thomas Miller here with you, and we're going to have some fun in this episode. So you know that we have this horary class out, and we've been talking about it, this course that we put together nine parts over, gosh, probably 15 hours of material of Robert explaining horary astrology. Why are we so passionate about this topic? Well, a perfect example came to me recently, and I wanted to tell you the story. So if you go to the show notes, there's a chart. And this is a podcast listener who asked a question about traveling this summer. So this person lives in one particular state. I'm going to keep all of this just very respectfully private. But this person lives in one particular state and was asking about traveling to another state for the summer. And she and her partner both had work opportunities in the other location that they could do. So there was a work component. There's a going back to roots kind of they love this place both and go back for the summer. It would be a nice break from the routine of where they are now. So the question came up, but there was some angst around it, obviously, of making this important decision. And they were concerned about making it during Mercury in retrograde and a strong Mercury in retrograde at that. So I said, well, let's cast a chart. Let's see what happens. She agreed. She said, yes, we can do that. So I said, frame up the question. I need it exactly as yes or no as you can get. And she said, would it be beneficial for me to travel to this other state for this summer And then she asked a sibling question, or would it be better next summer? All right, so we cast the chart. And Robert, I picked the ninth house. That's longer distance travel. And this was pretty much long distance travel. It wasn't international travel, but it was not close. It wasn't a neighboring state, let's say. And there were some other reasons why also we chose the ninth house. Well, if you look at the chart in the notes... The ninth house is ruled by the moon and Saturn, and they form an inconjunct, not a Ptolemaic aspect. So the chart couldn't answer the question right off the bat. Well, this is, comes from listening to Robert Glasscock a lot, who says so frequently, make something out of everything you can see. And I've learned from the practicums that you don't just stop with, well, so sorry, we can't go any further. You look at the chart. So I started to look at it, and several things jumped out that ended up being very relevant. So, Robert, we can talk about what I saw, but when you look at this chart, what do you see? Well, exactly the same as you. Uh, You go to the ninth house. The ninth house basically rules any trip that's overnight or longer. So that's what it means. It can mean international, it can mean across country, but so it rules trips. So you take the ruler of the trip question, which is cancer on that cusp, and that's ruled by the moon. Well, now you want to know what is the opposite house from the ninth? Well, that's Capricorn, because the house opposite, the house that rules the question, The house opposite that will show you the response of the total environment out there, favorable or not, to the question. The people in it, the the airplane trips, the travel, anything involved in this trip. The seventh house, the house opposite the one that rules the question, the planetary ruler of that opposite house and the planetary ruler of the house that rules the question, if they form a Ptolemaic aspect, will give you the answer, yes or no. Well... The moon and Saturn in this chart form an inconjunct, which is not one of the five Ptolemaic aspects. So you can't answer the question, just as you said, Thomas. But the moon is in the sign of Libra, and that's the sign of love and marriage and romance. So you know that that's a big thing on this woman's mind when she asks this question. And it's in the woman's 12th house. She's shown it the first So you can put this in your pocket. You've got the moon, a woman, in Libra, the marriage, in the house of secrets, 12th. And then you look to see, well, Mars is in that ninth house of taking the trip, and it's in the sign of cancer. She really wants to go for emotional reasons. 
and that Mars is trying her or this Neptune here in this orary chart in Pisces. Neptune is in her fifth house of love affairs and secrets. Neptune is in Pisces of secrets and trining this Mars. Mars is the sexual side of love and romance. So I'm looking at this thing. Well, Mars also squares Chiron in this orary chart. Chiron is in the 12th house in relationship to the marriage in the 7th house. So Mars square and Chiron means this marriage is having some issues that she needs to stay and deal with, but it seems like she is running away from those to take this trip. And now, Thomas, what did she tell you? Well, (laughs) if you look at this chart, this is why astrology just so totally amazes me and i know it shouldn't at this point but when you see things like this you just go wow so let me take a step back this was a random question that somebody i was actually in downtown Asheville buying this shirt that i have on this hippie tie-dye shirt that i'm wearing right now i was in Asheville buying this shirt when she texted me asking about some advice related to this to this situation and i said well i was on my phone and i don't my thumbs are six inches wide and i cannot type very well on the on the phone so i said well cast a horary chart (laughs) and i was like and then when i got home i reached back out to her and i said i could help you with this so the randomness of this so she reaches out to me while i'm over in Asheville. I get back. I was stuck in five o'clock traffic for a while, so it, my delay was even not normal. And then when I got home, I was fighting the nods. It was getting later on, well, for me, later in the evening, about 7 30 or 8 o'clock, which is I get up early, so I go to bed early. Point is, it was all very random when this chart was cast. And then finally, she responded to my text message, which she might not have done until the next day. And as it works out, if she had done that, the moon would have been in a place in the chart where you couldn't have looked at the question anyway. So it was just very random how this particular chart that you see in the notes was cast. And what she said was that a relationship that was there in this particular state where she used to live before she moved had reached out to her that day after a long silence, asking if they could at least be text friends, on the day that she was wondering whether she should go, and on this very random point of casting this chart, this former relationship guy shows up in her seventh house. And she later told me that he was a Leo, ruled by the sun, And the sun is in Taurus in the seventh house, next to Uranus and a very spicy Mercury in retrograde. And that's what you call coincidence or (laughs) astrology. Yeah, not. (laughs) Well, that's the power of this. It is absolutely incredible. I love horary for these kinds of situations, Thomas, because unlike natal astrology for a question like this you can get into all sorts of very detailed and very valuable pieces of information out of an orary chart that would you would get confused using a natal chart for something like this but when you isolate a question through orary astrology then this chart only applies to that question and from it you can kind of read what's going on in the client's life at this moment and you could get a lot more information even out of a chart like this where nothing changes the original answer in or in the original answer in this chart was it's pretty indeterminate the moon is in conjunct saturn and saturn's in pisces there's some responsibilities and probably some emotional responsibilities with Pisces involved that you need to stay home Saturn in the fourth house and take care of emotionally that's the moon in Libra this is this relationship that you're in at home but instead (laughs) you've got this yearning to take this adventure in this other state and go go see this past 
romance who's now saying, could we at least be text friends? And this may be, may be a way of escaping some things that you know that you need to be maybe talking with your present partner about, especially work and money related things. You know, what I mentioned to her on that Saturn down there, too, was that this trip has, because of that Mars up in nine and because of the moon in 12, has the potential to disrupt what otherwise might be a very long and lasting relationship where they are now at home, like you were saying. Very good. Well, Very good. this is the incredible power of this technique, and it's why we created this course, and it's why we keep talking about it, because even if you don't get an answer from the chart, if you understand how to do this, then there's just about, Robert, I would dare say no situation that crosses your path that you can't take to the chart and discern an answer. That's absolutely true, Thomas. And even in those situations where orary astrology, which has about five rules when you first set up a chart, that horoscope has to meet about five what we call considerations before judgment or five rules that tell you whether the chart can even be read. And sometimes even when the chart can't be read, what it's saying to the client is, you know, you need to keep thinking about this question in this situation because it still is in a state of flux and change and enough elements involved in this question, and you can help point out what those elements are, are not clear enough in the actual real world for astrology to give you any kind of reliable answer. So come back. It looks like maybe, and you can get timing with your astrology too. You can say, you may want to come back to this question in a couple of weeks, because I think things will have changed enough by then that astrology will be able to give you, a, you see what I mean? So it's an incredibly useful practical tool. Yeah, it really is. Or it can give you the inclination or the hint or the elbow in your ribs, if you will, that maybe there's some action that you need to take in order to better prepare for re-asking the question. Might not be just let time lapse. It might be you shore something up in your life and then you come back and we'll see where we are. And then you can get guidance too, Tom. I'm thinking about people who go and they have a great job interview, let's say, and they come home. Uh, how long should I wait? Does it look like it's going to be good? And also you can tell from Warrior Astrology, should I contact, it's been three weeks and I haven't heard, should I write them or should I just sit here and wait? Believe it or not, Warrior Astrology, can, you can look at a chart and say, no, it looks like you would be better off waiting. Let them take the initiative or alternatively absolutely this chart says absolutely take some initiative here and write them back i so enjoyed my interview with you looking forward to hearing from you anything so it can give you that kind of real pragmatic advice on how to behave and what kinds of responses to make in a given situation i just find it orary incredibly helpful well, you've done such a phenomenal job of combining all of these techniques and blending it into one, and that's what's represented in the course. This is not a style that you're going to find online. It, it, it's pieces and parts and combinations of such, but Robert has been the assimilator of this, so this is his system, and it is based off of Mark Edmund Jones' system, and it works incredibly well. The information on the course is right there in the show notes. It's right up at the top. We'd love to have you take a look at it. We're saying this for the fact that you could learn how to do exactly this, and it's almost like uh, the old saying about teach somebody how to fish and you feed them for a lifetime versus throwing them a fish. And so you can ask a question and have somebody else interpret it, or you can learn to do the interpreting for yourself. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time on the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast. And from Robert and me both, we hope to see you as well in the course. <music>